This is 11.2 heart notes. The essential question is, what are the chambers, valves, and blood vessels associated with the heart and identify the blood flow through the heart? The heart is divided into four chambers. The two upper chambers are called the atria, or singularly, they're called atrium, and they are the receiving chambers, which means that they receive the blood from the outside. The left atrium receives blood from the lungs, which are highly oxygenated. The right atrium receives blood from the rest of the body, and it is low in oxygen. The two lower larger chambers are called ventricles. These are the discharging chambers, or the blood leaves the heart through the ventricles. The right ventricle receives blood from the right atrium and discharges the blood to the lungs, so it carries blood that is low in oxygen. The left ventricle, the blood came from the left atrium and carry highly oxygenated blood and it discharges the blood to the rest of the body. So here are the two upper chambers. The one on the right side, that's your left atrium. Notice it's red because they carry highly oxygenated blood. The one on the left is the right atrium, which is blue, which carry low oxygenated blood. Just below the left atrium is the left ventricle. Remember the blood from the, right at the left atrium goes through the valve into the left ventricle. And below the right atrium is the right ventricle, which receives the blood from the right atrium. The walls of the ventricles are much thicker. When you compare the wall here to the wall of the atria here, it's much thicker. The reason for that is the ventricles need to create force to pump the blood out of the heart. The wall that's separating the two ventricles is the intraventricular system. One way to tell the, between the left and the right um, sides of the heart, especially the ventricle, is the outer thickness of the, the wall. The myocardium, which is the muscular layer of the heart, is much thinner on the right side, right ventricle, compared to the left ventricle. So the side with a thicker myocardial layer is the left ventricle, and the one with the thinner one is the right ventricle. There are three types of circulations. The pulmonary circulation is the flow of blood from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. The blood vessels that are associated with that is the right ventricle, sends the blood to the lung via the pulmonary artery. There's the left side one and there's a the right side one. And then the blood returns back from the lung back to the left atrium using the pulmonary veins. That is your pulmonary circulation. The systemic circulation is a circulation from the heart to the rest of the body, back to the heart. The major blood vessels that collect blood from the rest of the body and enters the right atrium is the superior vena cava, and then the bottom one is the inferior vena cava. The reason the blood is blue is because they, the blood vessels have already delivered all of the oxygen and the blood returning back to the heart is now low in oxygen. The blood vessel that delivers oxygen to the rest of the body is the major one is the aorta and that carries the blood to the rest of the tissues and the rest of the body and it exits the heart through the left ventricle. The coronary circulation is the actual flow of blood to the tissue of the heart, the myocardial layer of the heart. The major branch off the aorta is the coronary arteries, which supply the oxygenated blood to the heart muscle. The cardiac vein are the blood vessels that collect blood, the low oxygenated blood from the heart tissue, and delivers it back into the right atrium. The blood returning back from the cardiac vein enters the coronary sinus before it enters the uh, right atrium. The, any kind of blockage to the coronary arteries will lead to myocardial infarction, which is a fancy way of saying heart attack. 
There are four valves in the heart. The two are called atrioventricular valves, and it is found between the atria and the ventricles. The one on the left is called bicuspid because it has two flaps. The one on the right is called tricuspid because it has three flaps. So think of tri right. Tricuspid is on the right. The function of the valve, the atrioventricular valve, is to prevent the blood from re-entering the atria once it has left. So the bicuspid valve prevents the blood from leaving left ventricle and going back into the left atrium. The tricuspid valve prevents the blood from the right ventricle from re-entering the right atrium. The other two valves are called the semilunar valves. They are found between the ventricle and the artery that they are named after. The pulmonary semilunar valve is between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk blood vessel. And the aortic semilunar valve is between the left ventricle and the aorta. So the function of the semilunar valve is to prevent the blood from re-entering the ventricle once it has left the ventricle into the blood vessel. So the pulmonary semilunar valve, is their job is to prevent the blood from re-entering the right ventricle from the pulmonary trunk. The aortic semilunar valve, its job is to prevent blood flow from the aorta back into the left ventricle. The way valves work is they remain open when the blood is rushing in through them and once that the blood has filled with the chamber then it closes and it is held there by a, a structure called the chordae tendinae which are these stringy looking material that is called the chordae tendinae which means heart string. Then the cord is attached to a structure called the papillary muscle which is basically is going to hold the valve closed once the blood has entered the area. Again, remember the function of the valve is to prevent backflow. So once the, if you're looking at the right atrium, once the blood has entered the right ventricle, the valve will shut and then it will prevent the blood from re-entering back into the right atrium. That is the job of the tricuspid valve. Same thing on the left atrium, once the blood has entered the left ventricle, the mitral valve will then close and then that will prevent the blood from re-entering back into the left atrium. So here is the pulmonary semilunar valve between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. Once the blood has entered the pulmonary trunk, it will close and then it will prevent the blood from re-entering the right ventricle. The aortic semilunar valve is here between the left ventricle and the aorta and once the blood from the left ventricle has entered, entered the aorta then it will shut and then it will prevent the blood from re-entering the left ventricle. The major blood vessels of the heart, the biggest artery of the associated with the heart is the aorta, which uh, pumps the blood for to the rest of the body, and it exits the the blood exits the left ventricle into the aorta, passing through the aortic semilunar valve. The pulmonary trunk is a major blood vessel that's going to send blood to the lungs, and they branch into becoming smaller blood vessels, pulmonary arteries and they leave the heart through the right ventricle. And associated with the pulmonary trunk is the pulmonary semilunar valves. There are two vena cavas. The superior vena cava receives blood from the head and the upper trunk, and the inferior vena cava, which receives blood from the lower half of the body, and it enters the right atrium. The pulmonary veins, there are four of them, two on the left and two on the right, and they receive blood from the left and the right um, lungs of the heart, and it enters the left atrium. Because the blood entering the, the right atrium through the vena cavas came from the rest of the body, they carry blood in low in oxygen, the pulmonary veins um, their blood came from the lung, so they are highly oxygenated. Aorta carry blood that is high in oxygen because the blood from the left atrium 
went through the mitral valve into the left ventricle and exits through the left ventricle, so therefore it carries high oxygenated blood. The pulmonary trunk, remember, is the blood that came from the right atrium through the right ventricle through the pulmonary semilunar valve to the pulmonary trunk, so it's going to carry blood low in oxygen also. 11.2 notes homework. Number one, name the four chambers of the heart and describe where the blood enters and exits the chambers. Number two, name the valves and the specific functions of each valve. Number three, name the chambers, valves, and blood vessels that blood passes through in order starting at the right atrium.